Hey you guys, hope you're doing fine and staying safe, staying inside and doing all of the things that we are supposed to do. So today we are going to see something out of normal that is exposure and compensation. Hey, I am. Uh, I'm just going to name it go over. Uh, you will eventually find out what the series is about. So exposure and compensation are both defined different and serves its purpose in distinct ways. Exposure is the amount of light per unit area reaching the photographic film or an electronic image sensor. It is a single shutter cycle. Now what do you mean by single shutter cycle? Single shutter cycle is allowing the light for a determined period to the sensor of the camera. It's called as the single shutter cycle. And there are four factors that determine the exposure. The first is the ISO, the second is the aperture, the third is the shutter speed and fourth is the scene luminance. ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor to the light. Higher the ISO, highly sensitive it is to the light. Lower the ISO, less sensitive it is to the light. Aperture. Aperture is the diameter of the lens diaphragm that has been opened. If the F number is high, less amount of light is being passed through the sensor. If the F number is low, the more amount of light is passed through the sensor. Shutter speed. It is the time that the shutter remains open to capture the scene. Higher the shutter speed, the uh, sharper is the image. Lesser the shutter speed, more blur is the image. The fourth thing we are going to see is the scene luminance. Scene luminance depends upon four things subject, the source of light, the distance of the source of light from the subject, the distance of the subject from the camera. Three types of exposures you can get from image. First one is the overexposure where there is a loss of highlight details. Highlights are the brightest part of an image. Overexposure condition is where you cannot see anything at the brightest part of the image. For example, sky. You cannot see anything at the sky. Second is the underexposed image. There is a loss of shadows details. Shadows is the darkest part of the image and in this condition you cannot see anything that is in the shadows. For example let us consider night photography okay when there is no source of light that hits on your subject you cannot see what is happening in the scene. The third thing is the optimum exposure. Now this is the perfect exposure that you could get but this is only determined by the photographer and his decision about how the exposure should be. For you to get an optimum exposure you must learn exposure control. Now exposure can be controlled with two types that is the manual exposure and the automatic exposure. Manual exposure. Manual exposure is done with whatever I have said you before already that is the ISO, aperture, shutter speed and uh, scene luminance. With ISO, you you must kind of find a camera that, mu that must have an ISO range that is, you know, the range is big. So for the aperture, it not only controls the, you know, the opening of the light into the sensor, but it also affects the uh, bokeh effect, that is the amount of blurriness you get on the background. That is, in other words, depth of field. The shutter speed will determine if if you have a higher shutter speed, it will the object that you are trying to capture will be sharper. But if you are uh, gonna go with the less shutter speed, it is gonna be blurred out. That is what we call the motion blur. In case of a moving object, in a pretty standard object, the shutter speed doesn't uh, matter because the subject is static. And with the scene luminance, for example, I have a light at the right side of my face that is the source of light is window. And me as a subject, it is located very close to me. But the main source of light is from the sun, okay? But I cannot measure the distance of the, you know, source from here. It may be several million, billion, trillion, I don't know how much it is from my face actually. <laughs> so that doesn't matter. But when you are keeping the source of light closer to the subject, the reflections are 
much height and the distance of the subject from the camera is actually going to matter and that of uh, whatever is being captured in the sensor matters because they uh, imagine you're riding a bike and when you're uh, switching on from high beam to a low beam you can actually see the intensity that intensity is called as exposure okay when you switch it from high beam to a low beam there is a less, uh, less exposure and the you know the distance of the light is reduced in a similar way if i if i were to move my camera from the place where it is from now and imagine it is placed far away the exposure will be very low but when uh, i also move the source of light which is being closer in my case i cannot move the window but if i move myself say i'm moving myself 2 feet or 3 feet apart from here then the exposure on the subject is going to change meaning the light is going to be less with automatic exposure you will be using ttl metering through the lens metering in other words you can uh, call it as light metering which will help you to understand the exposure your camera is capturing so i'll go over two rules it might be confusing at the start but please hold on to me i'll explain it the best way possible and as slow as possible so the sunny 16 rule let's assume one aperture f number let it be say f16 and the iso let's consider it to be uh, iso 100 now the sunny 16 rule tells you that uh, if you uh, assume an value of iso 100 or any iso value the shutter speed will be the reciprocal of the iso value now what do i mean by that see for example if the iso is 100 at the aperture 16 then the shutter speed will be 1 over 100 let's say the iso be 200 then the shutter speed at f16 the same aperture will be 1 over 200 for you to get an optimum exposure possible okay now we are probably thinking that what are you trying to say if Uh, let me let me get this straight if i am shooting at say uh, 1.2 or 1.8 aperture okay and i want the subject to be you know uh, to have a good depth of field and real blurry background so how do i achieve it without decreasing uh, you know the aperture value hold on i've got you Okay, you can actually with this rule, you can actually get the optimum value at whatever aperture you choose, irrespective of the lighting conditions, whatever, unless you are trying to overexpose or underexpose your image. So let's say you are considering, uh, I mean, you are taking a landscape photo, okay, and you are uh, having an ND filter, and uh, let's say you are stepping it down to f11, ISO level at 200. okay when the iso is 200 when you shift your uh, aperture what happens is you must double your reciprocal value of the iso meaning if it is 200 iso and you have gone to f11 you must now compensate the you know the time the shutter remains open so what happens is double of 200 becomes 400 and the shutter speed value becomes 1 over 400 okay you are probably asking that nobody shoots at uh, f11 i get you now so let's let's even go down further okay and let's consider f8 okay at f8 you will be shooting at uh, say uh, iso 400 uh, now uh, you probably might have got it but i will tell you it again Okay so if the ISO is 400 what happens you have stepped down your aperture now double the ISO okay what is ISO 400 here if you double it it becomes 800 so your shutter speed becomes 1 over 800 this will give you the optimum exposure possible same like this the reciprocal keeps on doubling when you decrease your aperture now this is the Sunny 16 rule, Looney 11 rule. Let's set the aperture to 
and consider the same ISO and uh, the shutter speed may be the reciprocal value of the ISO that is 1 over 100 now say if you want to shoot at a aperture of uh, 8 okay and you're gonna change the ISO to 200 what you're gonna experience is you're gonna choose the same reciprocal value of the ISO that is 1 over 200 and for uh, let's say uh, even down let's say it may be 5.6 or something aperture value you're gonna choose 400 ISO and the shutter speed will be uh, 1 over 400 the difference between the sunny 16 rule and the loony 11 rule is you don't need to double the exposure value in order to compensate for the exposure time it is said that clearly understand this f16 and f11 f16 has lesser light and f11 has more light meaning the exposure time is nearly 2.1 times higher for f11 than f16 meaning you don't need to double your uh, shutter speed Looney 11 rule is used for the astronomical photographers and the sunny 16 rule is used ideally in the daytime the cool thing about both of these rules is that you don't need a light meter as you are controlling the exposure time by yourself now this rule only applies if you are controlling the exposure on your own or manually okay and the next thing we are trying to focus is shooting raw by shooting in raw format you are trying to capture all of the details in the shadows highlights whites and blacks this will actually help you out in the post processing while you are changing the exposure values to generate the style and the kind of mood that you want to show so even with the you know the histogram on and shooting at raw with this sunny 16 and the loony 11 rule you could get an evenly exposed shot if even that doesn't work you can change it in the post processing by using the GIMP programs that include Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom I generally use the Lightroom now for that you need to learn histogram what is histogram histogram is the graphical representation of the tonal distribution in a digital image it plots the pixels at a tonal value let's say this is a histogram to the left hand side of your histogram is the blacks which are the darkest part of the image next to it from the left is the shadows to the center is the exposures and to the utmost right is the whites next to it is the highlights in the y-axis it is represented by the number of pixels that your image captures and with the highlights that is being in this kind of shape it tells you that there are more number of pixels in the highlights in the or maybe in the shadows or anywhere that uh, whatever kind of image that you are taking the exposure not only matters with the luminance but it also matters with the colors so make sure that you keep histogram on on your DSLR and see that you even capture the right amount of colors by using a tripod and shooting in medium or low light conditions and the third thing is controlling the overexposure by exposure compensation now exposure compensation is to estimate the subject's mid-tone luminance multiple exposure is the superimposition of two or more images whose exposure values may not be same 
for example the first image that you take might be of zero ev and the second image that you take might be of minus 2 or minus 1 ev but you would impose them together by either manual binding cameras or automatic binding cameras or you could use the gimp as i said you before uh, adobe photoshop that is the manual binding camera is something that you, you you expose the image at the first frame and the camera keeps the exposure value of the first frame for the simultaneous shots in the automatic binding cameras it is not the same every time you are going to expose a photo the exposure is taken differently and this is why it is hard for us to take time lapses in our cameras where the exposure values keeps on shifting and to avoid this what we have to do is set the exposure value at any specific thing let's set it to minus one or something so that even during the time lapse it remains the same and you know the image doesn't go glittery and fluttery all of you know it's garbage so exposure plays a very vital role in this this method of adjusting your exposure value is called as histogram equalization but considering the adjustments that you are doing will affect only globally you are just adjusting the contrast as a whole as an image if you want to adjust the pixels individually you might be using adaptive histogram equalization ahe which determines each pixel and increases or decreases the exposure according to you globally you are just adjusting the contrast as a whole as an image if you want to adjust the pixels individually you might be using adaptive histogram equalization ahe which determines each pixel and increases or decreases the exposure according to you